southerner, it breaks my heart to see my southern schools typically ranked in the bottom 10th percentile of schools across the country. And I know our school board back in my hometown of Quacker Hall or Tennessee and the foothills of the Smoky Mountains would have been devastated by that statistic if only anybody on the school board had known what percentile meant. <laughs> Father Robertson knew what it meant, and he knew what kind of school we needed. The problem was Father Robertson didn't have any funds for that kind of school. But then he heard about the Christian brothers that make brandy to support their schools. Well, there ain't too many people drinking brandy in the hills of East Tennessee, but Father Robertson says you've got to sell what people's buying. That's why he decided to open up a monastery and convent to teach a new kind of school in Quacker Holler, funded by <coughs> Sunshine. Well you got to understand, this isn't a town with a lot of Catholics. We ain't got many Catholics in the hills of East Tennessee. Most of them are Baptists and Church of Christ. People don't understand all the, the robes and the incense, the Hail Marys. They think Hail Mary is a desperation football play. <laughs> they think those robes, oh, that priest is behind an altar boy under there. Uh -oh. And the incense, well, incense is something that you do with your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy was a Baptist preacher. My granddaddy was a Baptist preacher. The first time I mentioned the Catholic Church, my mom said, oh, I hope you're not going to become one of them. She said, the problem with Catholics, they think they can go out on Saturday night and get drunk and go to confession on Sunday morning and go and have all their sins forgiven, go out the next Saturday night and do it all again. I said, Mom, you can't do that. You can't get drunk on Saturday night and go to confession on Sunday morning. Confession's on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but more than convincing the Baptists that this was a good idea, the real problem was when the bishop up in Knoxville got word of what they were doing up there at that monastery. He said, there ain't no way, no how, we're going to have a, a, a school in my diocese funded by moonshine. So he himself went right to Quacker Holler, first time a, good, a bishop has ever been to Quacker Holler, Tennessee, to put a stop to it. Well, let me tell you what he saw when he got there that day. St. Martin's <coughs> has always been a tiny little parish, only about a dozen families and not much money. It's the kind of place where they use saltine crackers with communion bread. <laughs> they keep this holy water in a sun tea jar. <laughs> the church itself is in an old barn that says red man chewing tobacco on the side. <laughs> oh, oh, the Baptists, they love to make fun of that barn and church. Because they can't anymore, though, because the Catholics had a new church a few years ago. Now it's the nicest church building in town. They even took the wheels off and put it up on blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't tell you exactly what the bishop saw when he got there that day. You've got to come to the show for that. But I will say that as a result, this is the founding of two institutions in our town, St. Marlene's Marvelous Moonshine Made by Monks and St. Marlene's Abbey School. One improves our quality of life, makes us proud to be from Tennessee, and, it's, and inspires us to do the things we never knew we could do. And the other is a pretty good school. <laughs>